Hi everyone, my name is Maria Horn. I'm happy to be back after a hiatus of not making any videos. Um, I just wanted to speak about something that I know is on people's minds, also dealing with clients and customers who are worried about how the market is trending and not being certain, being an uncertain future is about panic attacks and finances. Like what are those quick and simple tips that you can do or can have to help you navigate and manage your emotions and your actions in very unstable times? One of the things I'm going to share with you is that try to think of the long-term view of both your savings and your investments because a lot of people are panicking and forgetting especially when it comes to investments and investments in the stock market per se is they are forgetting that stock the stock market typically will go up come down go up again there will be times in the stock market journey where the prices are going to dip now it may dip for a longer period of time than you are comfortable with but that doesn't mean it's not going to go back up and if you're a young investor or even if you're in your 40s or your 50s you still have time to ride the market so don't panic and start taking your money out of the investment space because you're afraid that it's going to go down to zero and you're going to lose all your money because in essence over time the investments and stocks have proven to outperform any high yield savings account or cds or bonds for that matter so i want you to like take a moment to just be calm and not um panic and take out everything out of your um, investments because you're afraid that you're going to lose it all and have like a long-term view and also have a long-term view of your savings as well like don't obsess to the last penny let's say you have um a substantial amount let's say like you have 100k in there and you you're obsessing over every single penny yes it's good to let your money work for you but it's more important to be mindful of how you spend knowing that you have saved enough for a rainy day so make the saving part of it more of the goal as opposed to how much you're spending on a daily basis yes keep the spending in check but be sure that you're always paying yourself first so that you're not panicking about not having enough because you will have saved money for it. Okay, the other thing is shop shamelessly for the best rates. And this I talk about like high yield savings accounts or HYSA accounts because right now there's a lot of, um, what's the word? Like there's a lot of marketing for high yield savings accounts by different banks so go to places like bankrate.com nerdwallet.com and see what different banks are offering for rates and you may find that you can get like i think right now um capital one is doing 4.3 apy um and then you have other banks like bread savings and these these are mostly online banks but remember that the service you get from an online bank may not be the same that you will get from an in-person physical location also when you're shopping for rates think about what you value like do you value to have money close to you so you can actually walk into a bank and speak to someone or are you okay dealing with someone over the phone or on your computer if you're a younger person a lot of them love doing everything online so just make sure you're doing your due diligence and that you're comfortable with the bank that you go with and this applies for cds as well if a bank is offering you 
a 4.5 um, APY, counter it with something a little higher. Like, don't be afraid to ask for more than what you're given because that's the only way you're going to make money. And a lot of people end up leaving money on the table because they are afraid to ask for more or they were brought up in a culture where they were discouraged from asking. But I want to tell you that it's okay to ask. It's okay to negotiate. It's okay to ask in your interests. So like practice that art of negotiating for rates because that will save you more money in the long run, also make you more money in the long run. And then the other one is like, know the difference between an APY and an, a monthly interest. A lot of people think that the APY is the interest. Well, in reality, your APY, which is the annual percentage yield, is actually the incremental yield at the end of the year, whereas the monthly interest is always going to be slightly lower than that. So say, for example, you're doing a um, APY of 4.50, your monthly interest is going to be somewhere around 4.40 or 4.45. Correct me on the math if I'm wrong there. So really what you're calculating is based, your interest earned is going to be based on the monthly interest, not the APY. What the APY is doing is it's telling you what your total annual interest on that product will be, say if it's a savings or a CD. And I always tell my customers or my clients, like if you want to know your what your the value or the the projected value or the interest earned on your CD is going to be ask for it to be calculated and just juxtapose it against like a different APY, for example, also ask for what is the difference because you may think that you're getting a specific interest rate when you actually aren't. Also, different banks have different policies and different financial institutions have different policies on how they pay an interest. Some will pay it on a daily basis, meaning that the interest will compound daily and others will pay it on a monthly basis, meaning your interest compounds monthly. There's a huge difference here because obviously if your interest is compounding daily, you're getting more than someone whose interest is compounding monthly or quarterly. So make sure you read the fine print before you um, commit yourself to a contractual agreement, for example, like a CD, because there is always the opportunity the, there's always the chance that you might be leaving money on the table. So just try, like, really try to read the fine print. When people, when a bank or an institution gives you disclosures, read them because they are important and they will help you figure out whether you're actually saving money or not. And then also the other thing I want to say is that um celebrate your small win wins. If you are able to find a good CD rate, take that. Obviously read the fine print, understand what the difference is, calculate what the monthly interest will be and what your interest earned will be after the period. But I encourage you to celebrate those wins because not everyone has the ability to save. A lot of people are actually in debt. And if you're able to put money aside in a CD, you are one step better than the other person so celebrate that and then obviously when you are panicking about whether or not you have money just take time to take a deep breath relax know that you're doing everything you possibly can to finance or to better yourself financially so don't feel like you know the world's coming to an end because the fact that you've already put money away, say, for example, in a 401k, if you have one, or in your emergency fund, or in a CD, you're doing way better than a lot of people. 
So I would say let the moment pass. Don't panic. If you have money in, in investments, speak to your financial advisor before like taking the plunge and just taking everything out of there because you may lose out on an opportunity for a high value gain down the road because you sold all your stocks. And the last thing I want to say is that just practice discipline and um, be confident in your ability to be the best and to get to the best level financially. Like it's possible, you can do it. It's not rocket science. It's just a matter of discipline. All right, that's all I had for you. And I hope to see you in the next session. Bye.